Hey everybody, JC here. Monday night, October 3rd. This is Major Hurricane Matthew churning in the Caribbean Sea. It is about to pass through the windward passage of the Greater Antilles, causing great disruption for eastern Cuba, Haiti, the Bahamas, uh, eastern Jamaica. Tons of rainfall here, lots of mudslides, double-digit rainfall amounts. I I've seen estimates of 20 to 30 plus inches of rainfall, which is absolutely devastating uh, with that mountainous terrain. Also, you would have flooding on the southern coast of, of Hispaniola. You would have flooding on the northern coast of Jamaica. So a, a historic event is unfolding for, for this area over the next 24 to 48 hours. Once the system gets up over the Bahamas, it'll then track dangerously close to the southeast U.S. coast, possibly making landfall uh, before heading northward into the, our latitudes. Now, I've um, let me show you 250 millibars, which is going going way up, and this is where you see those the outflow present on satellite imagery. The storm itself is rotating cyclonically, but at 250 millibars, you have a general anti-cyclonic uh, motion where you see those spiral clouds go opposite, spin opposite to, to the storm in the middle. It's kind of cool looking, but this is the overall envelope uh, of this system. And that is what will be moving northward through the, the windward passage. Now I've made a map which contains three phases of forecasting periods for Matthew. The first is through the Windward Passage into the Bahamas, which is high in confidence. The second phase is the, is the medium range forecasting period for Matthew. And there is decreased confidence, but increasing confidence. And therefore, the, the difference in track here is only about 100 to 150 miles wide. And you know the difference in that track can mean landfall for the southeast U.S. coast or a, a, a storm just offshore. Either way, eastern Florida through the Outer Banks are, are most likely going to feel impact from this storm, whether primary landfall or just, just offshore of a, of a solution. That includes your, your typical high winds, dangerous winds, um, coastal flooding, heavy rainfall, everything that comes with a, a landfalling or coastal grazing tropical system. The third phase is the long-range forecasting period for Matthew, which is north of this 35 uh, degree latitude and we still don't know what it's going to do up here we'll probably have a, a very good idea come Wednesday night but for now it's just too uncertain and and for that reason I have a track between A and B at these latitudes now most models today trended towards a, a solution like A the the Yuki uh, the, the the GFS the JMA almost every model today at 12z trended towards something like A except for the euro. The euro pulled a B. And the most recent run of the GFS, which was just about an hour ago, maybe two hours ago, also took steps towards B. Now, the main reason why B could happen is if the storm remains slower. And it has been slowing down. That's the trend we've been seeing the last few days. If the storm slows down, then the, the, the trough coming through the U.S. swings through faster than it and bumps Matthew out to sea. If, if Matthew holds it holds its speed and and you know gets going faster and gets ahead of that trough approaching then it, the trough could go negative and, and pull him right up the coast like this so that's the spread of uncertainty now I'm going to show you the the 12 Z GFS today just to show you the the main synoptic players so you have a big North Atlantic Ridge I'm uh, sorry big North Atlantic trough here you have a big ridge right here up into Canada Here's the, the U.S. trough. This upper level low plays a huge role in, in you know, downstream impacts, which I'll show you. But in the immediate short-term period, we have a ridge here spinning this way, and we have a trough in the Gulf of Mexico spinning that way. So Matthew has nowhere to go but to the north between those two uh, synoptic players. And again, either close to the southeast U.S. coast, possibly making landfall or just offshore. Now, this is the 12Z GFS. The 12Z GFS comes real close to Florida and actually makes landfall on the border of North and South Carolina. You can see the trough here tilted negative coming in. You can see a ridge right here separating Matthew from this upper level low, which wants to pull Matthew uh, 
eastward. As long as that trough stays intact and, and this trough remains strong overall, Matthew should continue up the coast like it does here on a 12 ZGFS. And you know that there there's your phase capture, and I'll show you what that looks like on the surface. There he is, landfall in southeast US, right over outer banks. The cat the, here's the trough interacting with Matthew. So that's a tremendous amount of moisture between this frame and that frame. And Matthew's just way too close uh, for comfort at this point. That that's coastal flooding, heavy rainfall, high winds. That's that's everything, and it could it could be a little west of that. And for that reason, I have A on the table still. Not not prepared to take A off the table north of 35 north. Now let's look at the 18Z GFS, which just came out. Again, maybe maybe an hour ago. And you can see it's much slower already at the same time frame. Uh, it's only off of the Outer Banks. When I go back over to the 12Z GFS, it, it's up here already. So... The 18Z GFS, the, the most recent run, is much slower, and therefore the trough swings through and bumps him out to sea. Here's the upper level low that literally danced around the ridge, which also pulls Matthew out to sea. And, and we have a storm system out here, closer to that B track. And let me go to 18Z at the surface. Here we go. Still a lot of strong rainfall either way for our region. Uh, Eastern PA... New Jersey, a lot, a lot of rainfall there. Now, that would be Sunday, give or, give or take, you know, 12 hours. Um, but this, the devastating part of the storm around the eye does stay uh, offshore. We, ha we, we deal with secondary impacts. And that's, that's even still with uh, B happening. Because remember, this, these lines represent the center of the eye. The storm extends 100 miles either way with, uh, you know, heavy impact wind. So even a storm that's moving out to sea in this area right here is still going to have some secondary impacts over New Jersey uh, as, as at least heavy rain and some wind. Once, this, once the storm does phase with the upper level trough and lifts out to the northeast, we're going to have tremendous northwest flow um, behind the, the cyclonic flow of, of that, that mid-latitude uh, mid cyclone because at that point it won't be a hurricane anymore. It will likely transition to an ex extra tropical nature which means it's no longer deriving energy from evaporation of water greater than 26 degrees Celsius. It means it's now um, deriving its strength from clashing of air masses. So once that happens, that's a major storm for Maine, Nova Scotia, and this area up here. So the, the entire East Coast should remain on alert, okay? Uh, Southeast U.S., a little more so right now than the mid-Atlantic and northeast because we don't know if it's going to curve around like this or, or, or continue that way. This is where we are right now. So you know, I would recommend just having a, a hurricane plan in place. You should have that in place anyway. Know what your evacuation route is if you have to do that someday. Um, I really wouldn't do much while, while Matthew is below this 25 north latitude. Once Matthew's up in here, if it looks like he's taking the inside route instead of this outside route, then you know that A is a little more likely than B. So you can you can start to anticipate and really make some preparations between these latitudes as, as we watch Matthew. Now, come Friday, if Matthew is closer to the A track as he gets north of this 35 north latitude, then you know this is probably going to happen. If he's out here or, you know, hooking out this way, then, then B is probably going to happen. And we'll be spared the main primary impacts from Matthew, but again, some outer fringe impacts in the form of rain, moderate winds, moderate coastal flooding. It, it'll be the, the, the lesser, scenario, uh, lesser scenario of possibilities. Again, that's where we are right now. The nightly updates will continue right now for tracking and ed educational purposes only. Uh, alarms will not be sounded until you know Thursday night at the earliest because there, there's that much uncertainty up here, and hopefully Thursday night I'm telling everybody that hey this is gonna this is gonna go out this way like B. Hopefully, hopefully I'm not telling you that A is happening, and that's where I'm at. So everybody have a great night and please be safe.